Welcome to Hands-On Auto Training. Note, this video is for informational purposes only. If you are not skilled or equipped to perform testing or diagnostics, please do leave it to the professionals. If you improperly test your vehicle, you could damage your vehicle, injure yourself or others. I am not responsible for that. So recently on my 2004 Honda Civic, I had a check engine light pop up just in time for the emissions check, P0135 for the oxygen sensor heater circuit, bank one sensor one. Just so you know, that was checked with a J-Box tool. This is an aftermarket tool, you get the same result. I always like to start off with a quick visual inspection. Make sure the sensor's plugged in, no chafe wires. I didn't see anything there, so next I referred to the wiring diagram for this vehicle for the oxygen sensor. It's also called the air-fuel ratio sensor. Note on the upper left-hand side, you see the uh, resistor heater circuit element in the air-fuel ratio sensor. That is powered up by the white wire that goes through a junction that goes over to the air fuel sensor relay. The white and red wire from there is powered by fuse 2, a 20 amp fuse in the under dash fuse block. So I located fuse number 2 and I connected a multimeter lead to the dash ground. Okay, so we're looking for fuse number 2. You take our lead and test it there with the key on, engine off, on that side of the fuse, and then also on this side of the fuse. A good fuse will have the same voltage on both sides. So with the fuse being good, we had to look at the wires that power up the heater element to the O2 sensor. That's a green wire and a white wire. We have to back probe these at the oxygen sensor. It is super important to back probe with the connector plugged in and the circuit loaded, that being the key on, in this situation. Otherwise, you could get false readings and replace components unnecessarily. So here we are, back probing the O2 sensor heater circuit with the voltmeter in the volts position, and we're going to get a reading. So knowing that we had a good voltage drop across the heater element, I could check the resistance of the oxygen sensor. I don't recommend checking resistance as a normal course of action in electrical testing, but this time it does show a open circuit out of limits there. So we went ahead and got a brand new oxygen sensor and uh, tested that oxygen sensor and it did have 1.3 ohms of resistance. So next I installed the new oxygen sensor. Note that when you're installing this, uh, make sure you put a little bit of anti-seize lubricant on the threads. It will help if it ever has to come out again. Next, I cleared the check engine light with the scan tool. Um, note that just clearing a light or resetting the codes as they say may not allow you to pass the emissions test. Uh, there are monitors that have to run, comprehensive component monitors that have to run and test all the systems of the vehicle. Here's a screenshot of the oxygen sensor test showing not complete. I had to drive this vehicle about six miles on the highway, steady throttle about 60 miles an hour in order to get it to pass the emissions test. Here's a picture, screenshot of the oxygen monitor completed as you see by the green checks, this still had to run the evaporative emissions monitor. However, for our testing purposes, we know that the oxygen sensor monitor has run and passed. Check out Hands-On Auto Training in the link below. Thanks for watching. If you like this, please subscribe. Thank you. Have a great day.